getting situated in a getting situated in a new home i'm quite sure many of you can understand that it feels different and weird and all the above but we are going to get this show going this is narc abuse tv network this is an improv show in other words we knew we were going to do it we just decided to do it today and right now and um well I hope you enjoy it. What's up, my friend? Nothing much. Just you. Get, How are you? Get my. Oh man. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm kind of down. You should know what I'm talking about. Uh, you mean you're getting down? That's what you mean. Well, no. I'm talking about what I sent you before we started. <laughs> when I was about to go live, and then the world in here exploded. <laughs> That's because you're really. fancy. That's why. Yeah, well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get up to your caliber. Let me see the if this is gonna caliber? actually gonna work. You mean rolling? Yeah. It? Yeah, that's it. Rolling with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Providence right now because this is really going to be funny. Okay, so everybody, again, new studio, and I'm using something that keeps going down. So hold on one second, everyone. Just hold it's, that thought. It's real. This is happening in the moment. So feel free, Crystal, to it's introduce organic. yourself and talk amongst the uh, the viewers here because this is actually no happening problem. right now. Yeah, I'm so glad Paxton, he invited me on. I was so happy to do that. It's another Friday. And as he says, it's his fun day. So every day is a fun day to me. I don't know about you guys, but how's your day going? I don't know if you want to share, but I'm looking forward to having this conversation, whatever comes out. Just rolling with it. My, t my tagline, my theme for life is just improv, improv and through life. Like... <laughs> I should probably get a plan together. I don't know. Do you guys have a plan? Okay. I see you, Jermaine. I see you. I'll get your info, okay? Thank you for sharing. And reaching out. So we'll follow up with you. I just got your info, so thanks for sharing. How's everybody else doing? Thanks for joining us. Hey! Whoa, you got some energy. <laughs> oh my god! I'm back. Is that your workout? For You're doing today? great. <laughs> Is that oh, your wait. workout? Uh. Kinda. Actually, it's really just coffee in me trying to keep me going. Coffee? Is that the only thing you do for energy? Hey, hey. hey just because I came from the ghetto don't mean I do that too. So, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just messing with you. For energy? No, actually, for energy, it's doing a show like this on the, you know, we can't even really say spur of the moment, can we? Because we already had this, like, we already, like, you know. It's, I know what you mean, though. Like, just not <laughs> planned out thoroughly. Yeah, but Just well, you know, with it. we only do that on YouTube because that's where we're going to be next. But so this now that I moved everything around and still getting used to wearing clean clothes, uh, <laughs> hold on one second here. Let me get like clean that. Uh, you did really well holding the show down until I came back. That was awesome. Oh, no biggie. <laughs> so who we got? We got the, what'd you say? Jermaine? Yeah. Jermaine I Walker. saved his info. Awesomely cool. All right. So, hey. Thank you very much, everyone, for showing up. Hopefully, you can comfortably hear me here with not too much uh, echo happening and all the above. Um, my friend, let's do this. I'm going to read off some information that you and I are going to talk about from Shahida Arabi. Yes. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because my cat is just walking. My cat Sherlock has just been walking into the studio Sherlock. and taking a look at what's going on. So. Um, Welcome, Sherlock. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Sherlock. That should be a shirt. That should be a shirt. Welcome, Sherlock. 
<laughs> Welcome, Sherlock. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about being a self-care warrior. So let's do self-care warrior 2021. Self-care for survivors 2021. Uh, let's talk about that. How are we going to do that? I'm going to read something from uh, Shahida. Uh, I that like her she, name. Uh, huh? I like her name. I, it just well, you know what? rolls off like Shahida. It sounds. I, I think nice. you could be her stunt double. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you saying I look like her? Now, look, you people taking that the wrong way. And I when like, I what? say you people, I don't mean what you think when I say you people. What do you mean, you <laughs> What people? do you mean when you say you people? I'm sorry, Ed. Got it. Okay, so we're talking five signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. Push button, hit repeat, grab some uh, paper, take a look at what uh, we're talking about here if you want to take some notes. Uh, you may be able to also either have this or find it on your own. Shahida. Uh, Arabi uh, gives us five <laughs> signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. First thing, and um, if you want to chime in and you want to talk about this, and uh, feel free to do so in the chat with one another, as well as uh, with us. Uh, we just wanted to present this material to you here on Nork Abuse TV Network. Narcissism, relationships, and recovery. Wait, I should roll my R. And recovery. Oh, you can a recovery. Well, we Got to get home. that that Spain uh, Mexican blood out of me there. Um, let's see here. Um, here we go. Speaking of being uh, goofy and serious, this is a serious subject that we will put before everyone. Whenever they're kind, you doubt yourself. You're oh. gaslit gaslighted into believing that they really do want the best for you, even while they're busy serving their own self-interest. Now, if you're in the chat here and that has happened to you, as I look at a monitor over here and I look over here at my buddy, uh, Crystal, Nicole Black, better known as CNB. Um, made that up. Always run the black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Somewhere. Like ba baby Johnny Cash. Uh, whenever they're kind, you doubt yourself. You're gaslighted mm. into believing that they really do want the best for you, even while they're busy serving their own interests. That's rough. Yeah. How do you how do you deal with somebody like that, my friend? Well, you have to ask yourself too, right? And you guys, like he said, feel free to chime in. But why are you doubting? Why are you feeling that way? Because you know, because it's already come up. There's some part of you that's knowing. There's something not quite right, right? Are are they lying? Are they being just like what? They're not being genuine, and you can tell. Like, and you're trying to figure it out over time. And I know for me, it's like you're trying to help. I'm, you're always trying to help somebody. You're feeling. You're you're communicating with them, trying to figure it out, right? Because you believe the best in people. You want to believe because right. you care about this person, and you want them to care back for you. So of course you keep feeling and wanting it to be like them thinking the best and treating you like trying that they're trying, but something's not quite right. Right. Did you guys feel like that? I'm wondering. And, and they're not giving, and they're not giving back. Like you're saying it, it's something's not right. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, Tracy uh, uh, at the studio is here. Uh, Audrey hero, uh, Sue PC 58. Uh, of course we mentioned uh, Jermaine being in the house as well. Uh, Cat bubble shop. Uh, thank you, Jermaine, for saying yes. Jermaine Walker says, uh, Jermaine Walker, 1217. Yes, he's experienced that. And uh, hello to Becky Boo, uh, as mm -hmm. well as Veronica 619, uh, Caroline, others that are here. Um, oh, wow. Jermaine says that he's, what is that, a male victim here trying to escape? Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, uh, my beautiful friend, uh, Bumped, Bruised, and Blessed, uh, who we did a show together, is here as well. If you have experienced what we have just mentioned, we are looking at the information from uh, Shahida Arabi. And this is what she has. Five signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. And the first one that she mentions is, whenever they're kind, you doubt yourself. And everybody, feel free to chime in uh, for this open discussion. Uh, we're going to highlight this material to you. 
You can uh, add it to your research material uh, as you continue to be a self-care warrior and a survivor in 2021. Uh, you're gaslighted into believing that they really do want the best for you, even while they're busy serving their own interests. Now, you were going to say something, my friend? No? It was going to, and I was going to say, because they keep telling you, typically, hey, I'm thinking of you. What, what's your problem? Like, why, why are you trying to blame me? Or what, what are you criticizing? Like, there's zero room for criticism, right? It's like, of course I'm thinking of you. Of course I'm doing this for you. Why, why would you think? Mm -hmm else like how dare you think anything other than that of me so then it of course you start questioning yourself you're like oh my gosh i'm doing something wrong i'm i said something wrong like clearly i'm mistaken because they wouldn't react that way right like a normal loving person that cares and that i care about wouldn't react that way but still as time goes by you know it's not quite right because it goes back and forth right it go it's that what do they call it? intermittent reinforcement that's that yeah. psych term I say yeah. it kind of funny, intermittent. <laughs> you say you said like your windshield wiper, it, it, intermittent. Intermittent. So, intermittent. I'm gonna no, do but, that. So that means mm -hmm. okay. So let's say it's me. So then I become defensive then because now it's going like no, I really do care. And now we're all of a sudden <laughs> the the arrow has pointed back to us when we were trying to solve oh. an issue, and it's like yeah. now we're trying to prove ourselves that we're the good person, and they're all of a sudden taking the innocent role, and nothing has really been solved. Nothing's yeah. been established. As long as uh, they um, can keep pointing it out, then they don't have to take accountability. So, do you have uh, do you have your copy in front of you? Uh, could you read number one? I don't know if you have it there. I should have asked you that ahead of time. My bad. New, My first day. Numero back. uno. Yeah, number one. She gives a remedy that we could put into play if we're in that situation. Hold on. Am I looking at the right one? It says number one. No, realize they're deceptive and cunning, but you can't yep. let go. Yep. 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 Yes, ma'am. Okay. Num number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> number one. But yeah, that's what, yeah, we're talking about because you know something's not quite right. That's what I keep saying. Like, you can't, sometimes you can't really put your finger on it. You're like, what exactly is it? And that person may come up with a lot of things to share about their background, maybe their childhood, or maybe they don't share that much, but just a little bit, just enough. So you're like, oh my gosh, they had a hard time. I had a hard time too. Well, we share that. I, I'm going to be understanding because I know what that's like. Maybe you have the same so they, story or a different story, whatever it is. They but, play on our understanding then? They kind of play on our understanding? That's why, do me a favor, read number one again for those in the back row. No, I'm just kidding. For the brothers in the back row. Just back row can, brothers. You read, <laughs> can you read back number one? Rows. So just in case people are taking notes. Number one, know and realize they are deceptive and cunning, but you can't let go. It's like, you yeah. know, your gut is telling you something, but you're like already attached. That's and what that's, uh, I call it. I'm like, I'm already attached. I'm done for. <laughs> you, you got some, you got some, uh, some love on the screen there. Cause, uh, <laughs> my buddy is agreeing with you there. Bumped, bruised and blessed. Uh, mentions that I love that yeah. you said that it was exactly right. What you said is exactly right. Intermittent reinforcement. In other words, confusing. And then she uses a couple of words uh, that my virgin ears are not accustomed to. So oh. no, I'm just teasing you, my friend. That's an but she is, she is agreeing with you and saying spot on. Uh, that it's, how did you say it again? Windshield wiper? <laughs> Intermittent reinforcement. <laughs> I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. Like a windshield wiper, yeah. an emotional windshield wiper. You never know what you're going to get. It looks like they're doing something, but they're really not. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps you busy yeah. constantly. So you don't have time to like fully process and simmer, marinate everything to get to a healthier place. Of course. I like that. Did you just say marinate? <laughs> Did I say simmer, marinate? <laughs> yeah, I, I that like makes me that. hungry. That's mm, <laughs> yummy. Uh, you just pictured. wrong. You just wrong. Okay, so uh, let's move to the number two, so we can move you closer to food, because now you just made me think of that. Number two that uh, uh, Shahida brings to our attention uh, from this article, and uh, Shahida Arabi. If you don't know who that is, feel free to take a look at it. Um, you're probably gonna post this, or is it already posted on your page? I don't know, because I was gonna tell people to go to your page to find it. Oh, I didn't post it yet. I definitely okay. will. So uh, oh, sure. tell them your page or feel free to type it in on the screen, whichever you want to do so people can find you. Oh, I can uh, 
check out uh, Crystal Nicole Black. Uh, you can find her uh, on oh, Narc right. Abuse TV Network today. And uh, she will also be appearing uh, there on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, so right now, the second one that she highlights, again, five signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. Number two, let me make sure I'm taking care of my screen over here. Okay, number two is they hurt you time and time again, yet you're always ready and willing to take them back at the first sign of their remorse or a hint of their attention. You defend them to others. Oh, now, yeah, who has been in that position? If you're here and you've been in that position, feel free uh, to give us a, a yes or a holla or a high five or prayer hands, whatever you want to do. Uh, to let us know, uh, and we will we'll see you. We just say roll or a thumbs down, or yes, yeah, or a thumbs down. There you go. Uh, so again, <laughs> they hurt you time and time again. Yet mm. you're always ready and willing to take them back at the <sighs> first sign of their remorse or a hint of their attention. You and defend you know them. You defend them to others. Go ahead, preach on, you know, sister. You know what that means. That means. <laughs> You are addicted. Boom. Mic drop. There you go. I, I need a, yeah, I don't have a mic drop. I've worked on that. I have don't, to do, don't you, really drop. I, I yeah. have a mic now. I have a cool, <laughs> I'm not using it, but. Oh, okay. That's a, well, you're saving oh. that for the YouTube channel. You get the yeah, YouTube. You, yeah. I, you got some love, love on the screen. <laughs> uh, bumped and bruised. Uh, Michelle, Michelle says, uh, she, she gives you the well, hallelujah. She, hit. No. She's probably saying she's experienced that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rochelle. Michelle's got a great story. Uh, we got to get her to the YouTube channel, uh, yeah. maybe with us and a couple of other people. Uh, Jermaine great. Walker, Jermaine's in the house. He says somewhat. What do you mean by that, my friend? When you say somewhat, if you've experienced that somewhat, give us shed some light on that for us, if you wish, if you feel free to do that. Hello to Tim uh, from the Roots of uh, Empathy, uh, who is here as well, and uh, others that have joined us. Uh, you know what I need to do? Let me hold on a second here. I told you. New studio, getting all situated here, unpacked so that I could do work today. And let me make my screen bigger so I can see it. Now I can see it. Uh, that looks like uh, uh, Olivis. Uh, good to I see you know. here. Uh, Bo Parrish. Okay. I know him. Now you. Go ahead, my friend. Nope. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, Jermaine just said I don't defend her. That's so it oh. sounds like he's to the point where he's done. Got That's it. he's like, This sucks. I can't deal with this yeah. anymore. I don't defend her. And I felt the same way towards the end, of course. But if you're dealing with something along the way and you don't want to mm -hmm. let go yet, I was gonna say, Of course you're gonna defend them if somebody else is noticing, hey, like there's something not right going on there. Like what's going on or mm -hmm. I don't like the way I heard him speak to you. So somebody's going to notice something at some point because they yeah. can't hide it forever. Like the look on their face or something they say, or the fact that you're not coming out like you used to, to see all your family and friends and you're staying yeah. home more with them, yeah. the isolation, whatever it is, like you've changed, right? You have to yeah. change to mold to this new lifestyle with this person. And so, so when you were, when you were defending uh, the narcissist, that was taking advantage of you. Um, did when did it start to make sense to you that well maybe they've got a point? Did it take years? Did it take months? Did it? Let me tell you something real sad. <laughs> I'm listening, my friend. <laughs> You're like, because a lot of people are like, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know. I didn't see the red flags. I was blind. I mean, I cannot lie. I did see the red flags at the beginning. They were there. And I knew it. And I remember sitting there going, that's a red flag. That's not good. Nor normally, really? I would run away right wow. now. Normally, smart crystal, because I'm smart, believe it or not. Uh, okay. believe it. <laughs> a lot of us we'll, we'll, hey, really we'll get smart. on that. We'll get on that bandwagon. Yeah, we'll get on that. Everybody, sure. uh, feel free to type in that you believe she's smart. Okay, we no, all agree. No, I don't need but, that. But the, no, everybody, just go ahead. Type the word smart in capital letters if you want. So crystal knows. The, but you know, you know Go I ahead. Mean. Because we feel bad that you we feel down it. on ourselves for going through this. And it's like, no, we are smart. It doesn't mean that you're not smart and you're not a good person and you're not resourceful because I'm all those things. But right. at the beginning, 
it's so easy to explain away and make excuses, especially if it makes sense from their point of view. And then you keep mm -hmm. justifying it and reframing and retelling yourself the story, remembering how they explained it to you because you've already gone to the attachment process. You've already fallen for them, whatever that attachment is, if it's the, the romantic affection and the physical side or the, the gifts they're giving you or the time, the quality time, whatever's feeding you emotionally and just loving that you need so badly, mm -hmm. you've already hooked onto it. You're already like addicted to it. You've already fallen. Right. You don't want to give it up. You don't want to do without it. And so at that point, what? you're trying to make sense of it and go, wait, maybe this is because he had a really hard time and we just need to get, we need to go to therapy or we need to talk this through or you just keep mm -hmm. making up all sorts of reasons because you care about them. You want it to work and you're well, trying did, so hard. Did you, did you find yourself I think you kind of touched on it, but um, you see you got love on the screen now, right? You I saw that, right? <laughs> uh, Michelle, Michelle hit you up. She gave you, she gave you two hearts uh, circling each other. She gave you three thumbs up and some hallelujah hands. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so she gave you nothing but love on the screen. Uh, so everybody believes you're smart. Uh, oh. but, but what I was going to say, I was I'm just like, messing with you. <laughs> so, so I'm just, you, you touched on the fact that you kind of replayed in your head. It's not the first time I heard this. It's just that I'm going to ask you this. You played, you played in your head the excuses that they gave you and tried to make sense of them per se. Is that, and yes. you pushed down what you knew was a red flag and ignored yes. it. But it keeps coming up like that feeling. That's what is I was there. Ask the anxiety it, it like, continues up again? to come up and you continue to push it down because if you are used to that, which I, from my past, I am used to pushing down my feelings or my anxiety or whatever that I'm used to pushing that down and remaining like in control or like, you know, like, it's okay. Let me figure this out. I'm going to figure it out. I got this. Uh, you know, I can't always listen to my feelings all the time. Right. You can't right. just, I was taught that like, don't operate off your feelings. Wow. So, and now so like, you, you <laughs> feelings okay, so are now you now you're in F mode. You're like feeling mode. It's like, it's like you're, you're totally, but at some point you were setting your feelings aside and try to outthink the red flag per se, in if I'm understanding way, you. Yeah. And the, and the other way, I'm very much in touch with the feelings that I want to feed, right? The emotional, the affection, the love, the whatever you think that feeling and that thing is it's feeding you because that's what you're attached yeah. to and addicted to and it's feeding you and you can't deny it because that's why you're holding on to it whatever it's doing for you and at the beginning or in those times and then you always want to keep trying to go back to it and um, at some point you can never go back to the beginning because there's something that you're going to get blamed for there's something they're going to either find out mm. about your past this is what mm -hmm. i've noticed get information from you at the beginning sharing because it's a lot of fast falling, right? They call it the love bombing phase. So, right. it, and it moves quickly. It moves quickly because they don't have much time because they can't hold up that demeanor for so long. They're, it's going to, they say only three months. That's what the psychologists, they all say you can't hold it up for longer than three months typically. Yeah. So I would agree with that from the timelines I have seen. <laughs> and Crack, cracks, in the, cracks in their armor started to show for you. He, he, it started to show when you were dealing with him. Yeah. And even before that, I mean, I did notice a lot of things and a lot of observations that normally I would walk away or run away from. And right, right. I think everybody's so different, right? We all have a different story and it's feeding a different need. Right. And for yeah. me, I think, I wanted to help. I wanted to be a caregiver or care. I wanted to be the one to help for once instead of somebody helping me. And so yeah. I saw somebody who needed some help and I was like, just latching onto that. You yeah. know, it made me feel you, good. You, you, you make me, um, you make me pay attention to number two, uh, on your list. Uh, we are working off the same uh, article. But uh, the, the second one, just for those who may just be joining, uh, by the way, you got something from Michelle there and from Tim. Uh, oh, and I Michelle just popped up. Ones. Something else just popped up on the screen from her. Man, you can I, read it out to everybody if you like. Cognitive dissonance. I learned about that 
way too late. Let me tell you, thank you for putting that on there. You stay because you have a good heart and you want to believe in their good. Absolutely. Even though it doesn't exist when you finally realize so common savers, helpers, givers, right? Empaths, a lot of empaths, a lot of, uh, caretakers, caregivers, um, self-sacrificing. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty much what she's describing there, Michelle, from bumped, bruised, and blessed. You stay because mm. you have a good heart and want to believe in their good. Even though it doesn't exist, we finally realize that. Uh, you but can't number believe. two, could you, would you say? Because you can't you believe say? that. You yeah. can't believe that it's possible that you're caring and this person you care so much for or that a person in general could even right. be, do that to you. Yeah. I mean, you can't believe it. So you, if you don't do it. You don't believe it. <laughs> well, read number two for us. You've got the, the ones numbered. I have the ones that are not numbered. You go ahead and read <sighs> okay. number two. And then you got love on the screen from the pack coach and uh, the cleaning out the closet here. Thank you, Tim, for your comment there. And uh, Michelle, um, I like that. You make such great points there. Uh, Tabby Girl 35 is here as well. Uh, Patrick and others. Go ahead and read number two for us uh, from uh, Shahida Arabi. Number two is try to please them, be loyal, try harder, right? But at this point, now they're causing pain, blaming, mm -hmm. guilt. Yep. They're making you feel like a bad person and shame and questioning yourself. How, if anybody has experienced that 10 years ago, two decades ago, whatever it may be, or this past year, maybe you're going through something with the NARC and parental uh, alienation, a number of other things. If you've been dealing with this where no matter what happens, it's your fault and you're the blame, how does that say there? Even when they give you nothing in return but pain. Mm hmm that's not easy to wrap our hearts around when somebody treats us that way. Go ahead. You were going to say, I was going to say, I will say in there to be real, that they got to do something for you or you really would get away. Um, so they're, all they're doing is causing pain. That's true. But whatever they're doing, that's, uh, you know, the bare minimum, that's okay. That's good. Whatever you want to call it. They're going to bring that up and say, Oh my gosh, why are you talking so bad about me? I do this for you. I'm here for you. I don't yeah. go out anywhere. I'm not cheating on you. I'm here yeah. with you. How dare you talk about like, or if it's a parent or somebody else, I have fed you and I have clothed you and I have given you these gifts and how dare what you? Else? Yeah, this is, this is the, this is the either bare minimum or you're not getting any more than this. It, it's like, there's no room for growth. Uh, if you mention your need is from what you're describing. Yeah, I'm because, laughing because my favorite's the one that's just, I'm here with you. I don't go out anywhere. I don't cheat on you. Like that's like, do you want a cookie for not was that true? Wait, was that, was it do true you, though? I'm not going to okay. say anymore. All right. So, all right, all right. Wanna, we'll leave, no, we'll leave that cookie? one alone. <laughs> we'll let, we'll let the audience, we'll let the viewers decide whether that was true or not, that it was said. But it's almost <laughs> as if, Whatever I'm giving you is good enough because I could be this awful person. I, you, you got door number one. You should be happy because I yeah. could be door number two or three, and you don't know what you would get. So just sit there and be quiet because this is all you're going to get. That would be, you know, you know, that would be awful for any man or woman to say that to their partner for life. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, look, what do, what do you want me to see what I can do to help make the situation better is what he should be saying that, or she should be saying. That phrase will never happen. I don't. <laughs> Let me know if never, anybody out phrase. there has experience with <laughs> anyone phrase. narcissistic where they have actually said that and like played that <laughs> off so well. Then I'm like, they deserve a Grammy. Not gra What's it called? The other one. An Oscar. <laughs> an Oscar. An Oscar. Yeah. Well, oh, I well, saw if they, for the Grammys the other day. If they if they said that, they would probably be singing it more than anything else, trying to get a Grammy and an Oscar because their ego would want both. Their ego would oh, want both of them. Oh, that was uh, good. I got to read the third one there, um, which is you uh, again, everybody. If you just got here, we are going over an article, a, a posting, as it were, from uh, Shahida Arabi, and uh, she is highlighting the five signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person, five of them. Uh, 
Uh, we have covered two of them. Now the third one. Uh, she highlights, you develop an addiction to this person that is not only psychological, but biochemical and psychological. You constantly try to explain to them how they hurt you. You feel you can change them. Mm -hmm. Again, she highlights, you develop an addiction to this person that is not only psychological, but biochemical and psychological. You constantly try to explain to them how they hurt you, but you feel you can change them. That seems like a no-win kind of a situation. It's what we call crazy making. Crazy making. Yeah, there you go. It's, <laughs> hey, it's, what, uh, it's what Michelle was just talking about, right? Uh, yeah. Pat Coach got some information for us sure. down there. Could you read the screen for me, my friend? Yes, you do. But the problem is you can't notice it. And they do all the same stuff. Bum to bruise and bless. Parents and narc partners. Yeah, Anastasia, mm -hmm. uh, the Pat Coach, and then we have Michelle, uh, bumped, bruised, and blessed both uh, contributing some information for everybody there. Um, read number three for us, please. You feel addicted to them and you lose more than you gain. Man, that's, that's a no win. That's like, no, I'm just saying, I mean, how do you, I know I'm really taking that in right now because yeah, like it's really tough. Because just to realize that cycle when you get in it, that you're trying to prove yourself. And it's like, why did I do that? Why do I do that? Like, I've done that actually in a fa familial relationship quite oh, okay. a bit. And I've, okay. I've revisited it recently and tried even harder. Like, I was, like, as I was learning about all this, because I thought, yeah, maybe we had a breakthrough because one day it would be good, you know, and the next day it would just, it was either black or white. And that's part of the thing. Mm -hmm. If this person really is pathologically having narcissism, then it's black or white. There's no gray in between. It's like they're incapable of having those gray layers that we all know in our life is like humanity, right? It's just mm -hmm. the way life is. There's nuance, right? Nuance, yeah. um, layers, that's what I like to call it. But they don't, it's either black or white. You're good or bad. You're either in or out. You're either for me or against me. Like there is a line and that's why everything's so dramatic. Right. And it causes, I feel like that weird addiction where you're trying to prove yourself because you're getting blamed constantly for being against them or for doing the wrong thing. And it's like, you didn't do anything wrong. You're just living life. You just like washed yeah. the dishes and now you're doing something wrong because you made noise or you, <laughs> whatever. You're like, what? Like, are you, what kind of crazy pills are you taking? Can, and then you get you, a fight about that. You get like, this big you fight. I was going to say, yeah, you get into this big fight. That. You're like, I was washing dishes. What, you know, and then it goes to this whole other. Can you imagine a teenager right now that's living that life at home and their parent is narcissistic and they're trying to do their chores or do their homework and trying to yeah. excel at school. And then they, they're growing up and they, they need to, they need to know that it's not them. Absolutely. Uh, and it happens at different nothing. ages. Like you said, teeny, it could be at a lot of different ages. Cause I've noticed with the parent, parents, the parental figures, it can happen more when they go to preteen to teenagers. Cause that's when you're really becoming more an, of an individual, right? You're no longer right. an extension of your parent, of your family. Right, so they, right. they can't allow you to just grow into your own person. So they're going to be more yeah. controlling and negative. Right. Trying to, trying to always control quote unquote parent uh, mm -hmm. instead of letting the child actually bloom. You've got uh, love on the screen from uh, Anastasia, the pack coach. Uh, she says you are sick, AKA codependent, yeah. but you can't reflect mm -hmm. uh, crazy. Uh, all this uh, stuff that uh, a narcissist will put a person through. I've got to go back again to what Michelle said. They all do the same stuff, parents and narc partners. It's almost as if they're breeding each other, one to the other, yeah, moving sure. from one phase in life in a pod <laughs> as parents and getting children that they treat that way who end up marrying, getting married, and now they're carrying on the same thing that the grandparents are doing. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it happens a lot. It's different for different – like some people come, yeah, straight from like one parent's a narcissist and other people – 
kind of become that way and make a false self because of the trauma they endured and they didn't emotionally develop mm -hmm. at that very young age or they're like you're like a baby to two years of age and then there's that development to three to four and it's like after that I don't know what, what happens it's like you're done like you're either emotionally developing or you're not and you become this survivalist and it's yeah, pretty fascinating people are in survival mode did you find yourself taking a look at a comparison between uh, your partner who had these traits and behaviors uh, of being self-absorbed, narcissistic, and those within your family mm -hmm. that were that way? Did you see any similarities? Yeah, and I hated to even think that at first, and I've said it a couple times, but I always make this caveat, of course, I'm not comparing this person to this person at all because there's different l levels and different parts on this levels on a spectrum right just like anything else mm -hmm. right. and that is true but at the same time just like you said absolutely can compare and go oh they said this to me they also say this to me of course yeah. i'll put up with this because i've heard this before this before i have yeah. felt this before yeah. right it doesn't feel good but no it I, I actually want to I want to pick up on that, which you just said you felt it before because I had someone else mention that to me and they're a psychologist and they were were with a narcissistic partner and they've had years of experience. But they kept ignoring, as you were saying about yourself, but they were saying they knew they were looking at red flags. Mm -hmm. They tell people and teach people what they are. Mm -hmm. And she pushed them down and I pushed know. them down. But it didn't make her feel good. Matter of fact, she said, similar to you're talking about, it make you feel good. She said she felt dirty. She felt soiled. More and more, she, she spent time with him. Mm. And then she married him, and it just got worse. Wow. Until, until finally she, she brought up the red flags and everything else and the bad behavior. And, of course, he was out of there. But he was already preparing to leave her mm. behind the scenes. Every anniversary, she never knew he was going to make it to the next one until finally he left her right before their anniversary. So, so it's amazing how individuals uh, will try to hide it, but it didn't make you feel good. No, it's just familiar. It's either familiar from some, somebody else who's treated you that way and you're not pairing it together, just like Michelle has said, you're just not being aware and like reflecting and taking that time, or you feel that way about yourself or both. Like I didn't realize for me and you guys, I don't know, let me know if you've faced it, but I had to face the self-loathing that was inside of me that I would have never imagined that self doubt, but actual self, like it was deep in there, like buried Whoa. in there somewhere. And I finally got to the root of it. And I'm like, I was just like, what? Like I was surprised. Like you're gonna be kidding me. Because I'm always like so confident, because I am confident about a lot of things, but there was something in there that had grown and been in there, you know, over time that now at this point, it's like it had to be addressed, thank God, you know, the root of it. And that's what, I don't know how many of you guys have addressed the real root and felt that it is painful just realizing I don't love myself. Like there's self-loathing, there's self-value issues. Because I wouldn't be putting up with this and dealing with this. That would not be happening, yeah. period. You find yourself in a different spot today because you're stuck with me. And now we're gonna now we're gonna we're gonna go to number four. Uh, we covered three areas uh, that are highlighted by uh, Shahida uh, Arabi in an article. She is the the self care warrior. Uh, you can find her at self care warrior on Instagram. Uh, and also, uh, you can take a look at her Facebook, uh, which is Self Care Haven. Um, okay. This particular posting, what was that? Did I say that right? Yeah, Did I was I like, right? oh, I didn't see the Facebook one. I don't know if I didn't okay, know. so hopefully I said it right. Okay, so here we go. Number four, she is highlighting five different signs. Uh, you are in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. That's the article. Uh, my cohort in crime and co-host today uh, is uh, CNB, Crystal Nicole Black. That is her there uh, on the other side there. We're working together uh, to highlight number four. Number four is self-sabotage 
becomes an automatic reflex. You're subconsciously programmed to harm yourself because you've been conditioned to believe that you're not worthy of safety or peace. Yeah. It's pretty sad. It's true. <laughs> we get to the point, a person can get to the point uh, that they don't feel that it is worth the effort to live anymore. Mm -hmm. This is, this is sad to say a common occurrence for a number of people. It's easy for me to repeat that to you uh, because I speak uh, from experience from interviewing individuals. I've interviewed enough individuals over the past 16 months to know that over 80% of them have felt this way at one point or another. I'll repeat it for you. Uh, again, this is uh, Shahida Arabi. Uh, her article here says, self-sabotage becomes an automatic reflex when you're dealing with a dangerous trauma bond and a toxic person. You're subconsciously programmed to harm yourself because you've been conditioned to believe that you're not worthy of safety or peace. Uh, see Michelle, what Michelle. Has mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, see what she so, wrote? Can you read that for the, to the audience for us, please? Narcissistic, confident people. Is that what it says? Yeah. Narcissistic, confident. And turn them codependent. Yes. So the, the narcissist turns the confident person. Yeah. Even more so into a codependent. Um, we're looking at a situation in which sometimes people suffer this in silence because they've been isolated from their families and their friends and they are literally suffering inside as if they are not worthy uh, for safety and peace. And you know what? There's so many other factors that can come into play with this that confuse people. And I can speak that from experience too, like just religion and other types of groups and communities, other types of influences, teaching other teachings. If you're brought up, with that, or if you're joining something, whether it's a cult or just a religion, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be super extreme exactly, but it depends on how it's being taught and presented to you, right? And I know I've dealt with that quite a bit that went along with the pairing of mm. some of that narcissism and emotional, like, yeah. it's like, oh, wait, I have to follow this. And this continues with that black and white. I'm not good enough because I have to ask for forgiveness for my sins and I got to do this right. And I got to go to church and I'm up, and if I don't do this, I'm not a good Christian or I'm not a good this, right. Or um, I'm going to get no, nothing. Nothing comes from the somebody. heart. Nothing comes from the heart. The love doesn't come from the heart at that point. It comes from not getting caught or as it were, behavior. I just might as well not be. Yeah. Yeah. The behavior, behavior. is, is forced and not from the heart. Um, I'm, by the way, you see what Michelle wrote there. Michelle, we love you, my friend. So don't worry about it. You're you're good. Your your addiction is your addiction is a lot better than mine, and your spelling was perfect. Uh, so we're all good. Thank you so much for being here. Danny eighty uh, four is here. Aaron uh, has stopped by as well, and uh, Hendonen. Uh, I probably butchered that. Uh, Yari Ta forty four. I just. I think sometimes people come to the show just to hear me say names and laugh at me and go like this. this. So I just want to make sure to let you know, I love saying the names. I just hate getting them wrong. But, you know, like a warrior in the world, uh, reach on recovery, you know, reach one recovery. Uh, Flores uh, dot land is here as well or has passed through. We appreciate all of you for taking a peek or staying uh, for our brief uh, self-care warrior uh, for self-care for survivors 2021 improv that we just put uh, together <laughs> for everybody today. You're making me laugh. You're making me feel like I'm doing a skit. You know, I used to do acting. I feel like yeah, I'm like, yeah, we're hey, doing an improv skit? What? Hey, oh. yeah. I was just trying to tell you, hey, don't expect the best. Just expect we're going to do it. So there, there it is. I'm banging the mic. Trying if you to bring the yourself, Here you are bringing the best. Just dun, 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 dun. Do not forget that for I okay. and Ricardo Montoya. Okay, all right. So oh my gosh. You, you give it to my father and I. Okay, my one of my favorite movies. So, I mean, we 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 still love that in my house, Princess Bride. It's classic. Seriously, it is like classic. next to Toy Story, of course. 
Okay, so here we go. Um, you get to read number four on your on your sheet there. Um, go ahead. Numero cuatro, driven to, oh gosh, I wrote, can I read my own handwriting? Driven to the brink of self-destruction. It's sad when you can't can, read your handwriting. It's that sad. Can you read your own handwriting? What, what, mm -hmm. it, what are we um, doing here? If All I'm right, so. improving and going with the flow, it's hard to read. It's too messy it's hard sometimes. To read. And we go with the flow on, on uh, this because this is indeed Friday here at Narc Abuse TV <laughs> Network. I just love saying it. Fun Narcissism, Friday. relationships, and... Re wait. Recovery. Recovery. <laughs> it's a, a roll of my R's. Okay, so what we're looking at here, just so everyone knows, if you have just uh, come in, I'm looking at uh, uh, my powerful friend, Natalie, uh, who was on the show last year, uh, has an amazing gym in uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, Margot is here as well. H. Gettings. I'm probably saying it all wrong. Oh, I know. I love you. But, okay. Oh, got some love in the house. Oh. Got some love in the house. In we the are house. reading. We are. Oh, we are going over an article from Shahida Arabi. Uh, Shahida Arabi. Uh, that's at Self Care Warrior on Instagram. Uh, we're looking at her article that she uh, put out concerning five signs. You're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person. My co-host today uh, is c and B. I'm just going to keep saying that because I just made that up. Crystal Nicole Black. Uh, you feel free to like, comment, share, Nicole follow Black. her page. <laughs> hey, wait, I can do that too. Packs it back. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. So, uh, that should get me kicked Tell off. Me. All right. So, all right. Here we go. So. Uh, we looked at four of the items that she highlighted. Of course, we're now to number five, and then we're going to be bringing this to an end. But we wanted you to know you will find more of what we're doing on Narc Abuse TV Network on YouTube because uh, you are one of the many who will be joining me uh, to be able to do this where we look at other people's information and see how we can apply it. So number five, you start to believe you're worth unworthy. You start to believe you're unworthy of attention, affection, or respect. Uh, they've convinced you mm. that you're not enough and that you have to fight for their approval. Please, by all means, let me repeat that. And now, Shahida wrote this. You start to believe you're unworthy of attention, affection, or respect. They've convinced you that you're not enough and that you have to fight for their approval. Anybody experienced that? Many of you have been sharing uh, what you've experienced when we read each one of these. If you just joined us and you'd like to share or get it off your chest, feel free to do so. Uh, do you see what Tim from the Roots of em Empathy yes. wrote there? I do. I just grabbed it. You want me to read it? Please read that for everybody. He said, I always felt the toxicity but ignored it always. It is absolutely okay to compare situations, relationships, that's how we learn. And we have to be super honest to ourselves, which let me tell you something that can be, that's a learned concept because I did not know how to be honest to myself for a wow. long, long, long time. Long, long, long. I didn't even know what I was thinking or feeling. What did I like? What did I like to do? At one point I lost, like, I was like, I don't know because I'm told what I like or what I should be thinking or doing. And I didn't even know for a while. What was that? So I'm sure okay, somebody so might that, understand. Okay. Yeah, anybody out there, if you can relate before we're going to end the show here, we're going to end the show in a few more minutes here, but if you can relate, if you don't share with us now, it's understandable, feel free to get a hold of Crystal Nicole Black uh, on her Instagram page because that's exactly what it is, Crystal Nicole Black. Hit me up. All right, but hey, so was that like you next to the edge of a cliff when you started to recognize who am I, kind of like what do I like? Was it kind of creepy, weird, scary kind of a thing happening emotionally when you started to look at that? I'm laughing because I've experienced this a few different times at different points in my life. As I was growing up, like as a teenager in my 20s again, because this was something that was conditioned and kind of in there. And then um, as an adult now going through it and just, I, I know what I like. I already knew, I had gone through this journey already, which is for me, I don't know about you guys, but that's what made me super sad and like hard on myself. Well, how did I go through this? Why did I put up with this? Cause I know, like, I know 
I know how to be honest to myself. And I was just pushing it down and didn't want to listen because I was getting something else met, another need met that I wanted so bad. Right. Was it worth it? In those moments, I guess, because that's that self-sabotage you mentioned. That's that yeah. self-sabotage. Because mm -hmm. you know, if you know, or it's sub subconscious, you know it's not going to be good for you in the long run. And you're doing it for short-term gain instead mm -hmm. of thinking healthy long-term. The immediate hit that was being given to you that filled a void or a need that you, you felt was being met and then in turn, the trade-off was, well, then I'll just ignore the red flags. Um, like throw the well, ball down the road, right? Like this is not going to yeah. work out. At some point you realize this is not going to work out if you, you don't kick change the can. behavior. Yeah. Kicking the can yeah. down the road. And you yeah. start to say it, or I did. You start to say it eventually. Instead of keeping quiet and keeping the peace, you're like, this is crazy. It's not peaceful anyway, so I'm going to start speaking. And then, if, <laughs> you're like, you know, keeping, you're keeping what, the, peace? You're, what peace? You're keeping the peace and going like, no, no. it ain't peaceful anyhow. It's, yeah, it's not working. No yeah. I'm sitting here supporting, <laughs> I'm, I'm here supporting chaos here. Uh, you, Tim is agreeing with you uh, on the screen. Uh, Tim from the Roots of Empathy says, bingo, I agree. Uh, he says yes, emphatically. He says yes uh, of what you're describing right now. Because, again, the number five sign that uh, Shahida Arabi uh, puts out for everyone, her Facebook.com, uh, uh, would be uh, self-care haven. Uh, feel free to go take a look. Uh, she is the leading individual showcasing this information. Um, but she is indeed the self-care warrior herself, uh, giving you uh, the models of information that you need, uh, the modalities that will work for you. Um, she says again, you start to believe you're unworthy of attention, affection, and respect. Was that mm -hmm. something that you began to recognize in yourself that it was just, well, I'll just take whatever breadcrumbing or whatever little nuggets I can get. But then you also found yourself doing what she says here. You find yourself not enough and having to fight for their approval. Did mm -hmm. you find your relationship going in that direction oh yeah like why do i keep defending myself it's like it, it was an automatic response because this goes back to that point you made at the beginning where this trauma bond is not only psychological but it becomes biochemical up here right and then physiological throughout the body so suddenly it's an automatic response i can't even control myself anymore because so much trauma has been built up right emotionally yeah. hurt wounds mm -hmm. and it was more than just that it was a lot of other i didn't realize how bad it was from the past so it all builds up and at some point you can't control it anymore and it's coming out and it's an automatic response i'm defending myself i'm and i'm pretty good at debating like if anybody wants to debate like i'm pretty <laughs> darn good like i should have been a let lawyer. me let me let me darn note it. that not not to debate with you well, not to debate with crystal on the show and I was so confident and cocky thinking, oh, I'm such a good debater and I make the best point. Like, they're going to see my point. Just wait, like, because I'm so good, right? That was a downfall for me being too confident in myself and things like that and not understanding, like, no, you're about to really hurt yourself worse thinking you're going to be logical and make sense out of this. Um, and no. The, no and the toxic, the toxic person is feeding off of that that ego that keeps you fighting and trying to explain and defend and they're creating havoc and sit back and watch uh Which they would watch the yeah because in the moment mm -hmm. you're like you think they're not enjoying it because they're either yeah. super angry yeah. and absolute yeah. rage or they're just right. you know you know rejecting you or doing silent treatment like one of these things is happening right you're mm -hmm. getting punished somehow so you're like they're definitely not enjoying it but then later when you reflect and you <laughs> learn about all this you're like, oh, that's what they're calling supply, this whatever narcissistic yeah. supply, because it feeds the yeah. ego, because it makes them feel more important, because they're not feeling important in themselves. They need to pull somebody's strings because they, yeah. they have no control over their, their own life and their own emotions and the darkness that they may be feeling. But number five, madam, would you read that for us before we end the show? Sure. Number oh. five from Shahida. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Number five. <laughs> bingo no <laughs> bingo bongo number five is for you forget your worth and you're willing to lower 
your value and your standards for the toxic person over and over. Yeah. And then I wrote below that to get the high, to get the love and the good times that you felt before and the good memories. And you're trying to hit that. So you're willing you to do it over and over. Cause you're like, if I just do this, then it'll get better and it'll be back and they'll get past this hard time. They're going, whatever justification you're making up. Yeah. Their, their, their past, uh, they're mad at their boss, uh, mm -hmm. their background, they're mad at their boss, their, their big brother or their younger <laughs> sister is acting crazy. You kept making all of the, the guy at the grocery <laughs> store looked at him the wrong way. You kept giving them room to bring back the good times and they kept closing the door. And you want the good times too, because you've already bought into that fantasy, the future yeah. faking, they call, right? Because they've already promised all these things to you, most likely, or a lot of us. So when, it, when, it, when it comes to an article like this, when it comes to a posting like this, five signs you're in a dangerous trauma bond with a toxic person um, from Shahida Arabi. Shahida. When it comes to a posting like this, I didn't I didn't know it existed. Uh, you were kind enough to, to bring it to my attention. When it comes to this type of a, type of information. When you went over it for the first time, I know you no doubt thought of yourself and other situations that you've been in, but how can this from your, just tell me from your heart, uh, how can, how can others benefit from this information the way you have? Oh yeah, this is good stuff. These are golden nuggets. These are like <laughs> super important. Like I think, this one she put together is really perfect because you can read a lot of stuff. I don't know about all you you guys, but I read too much. I read a lot of yeah. stuff. I, I'm yeah. curious. I'm learning. I'm all over the place. I'm overanalyzing, overthinking. I'm learning. I'm reading too much, too fast, too furious, too fast for you. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, that's yeah. Yeah. what I do. So, yeah. And for this to be put together, and this, this is, like, yeah. perfect. It's like a little mini uh I don't want to be in a toxic relationship Bible, like one page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lam laminated, laminated, and I'm putting it in my, I'm putting it in my wallet on my purse. Okay. So everybody oh laminated. That would be awesome. It was like, you totally just, you call her up and say, can I laminate this and just, or even better, let's just make it a t-shirt. Can we just make it a t-shirt? I wear it. And when I meet somebody, I just point at number one, two or three. It's just kind of like, you're like, here. Check number one. You're here. You're here. All right. So, um, my dear friend, Overkill. we are we are <laughs> going to call this uh, to quits, everybody. We wanted to come on and share this uh, particular information with you because it is, it's almost like, you know, get ready, set, go. It's like you can just, you know, push play and it's ready. It's right there for you. Yeah. Five things that you can keep in mind so you can stay in tune with your emotions and not try to overthink or outthink a narcissist but recognize that the reality of it is they don't care. And uh, there is uh, no way you could seek their approval. Uh, they would have to make the adjustments to move closer to you and to the way you want to live uh, instead of you being dragged down and isolated into mm -hmm. the way they want to live. A any thoughts before we go, my friend? Man, it's just so good. Like, I don't know, the self-sabotage thing really hits me. I don't know about you guys. I'll just, I'll, I'll leave and say that last. I've been learning more and more about self-sabotage and how I've done that over the course of my life. And it's wow. so insidious. It just creeps in there. And you're like, Oh, that was self-sabotage. That's weird. You know, something like procrastinating or <laughs> whether you're at work or you're doing that, like whatever it is, staying up late. Doing that. There's so many different yeah. ways. It creeps hey, hey, in. You just said, you just said procrastination. And I did a show prep yeah. uh, about a week and a half ago and uh, is a therapist. And she said just what you mentioned, that she recognized from her patient that the toxic person gets them to procrastinate on something they need to take care of and helps them self-sabotage, mm -hmm. gets them into that pattern. And before they know it, they've then <laughs> flipped it around on them and said, 
you should have took care of that bill a long time, or you should have took, and now that that victim is is beating themselves up and taking the blame, where in actuality, the narcissist, the toxic person, helped them find put themselves in that position yeah. on purpose, on purpose. That is literally. so true. That's that has happened. landmine or yeah, emotional landmine. Yeah, yeah. Or if you just make a plan to do something and they know about it, they may purposely have an emergency and mess up yeah. your meeting or your whatever. Yeah. Same, di same difference, I guess. Different job, in job interview, whatever, right. something with your business. Uh, you got some more on the screen. Could you, could you please read that for us? Roots of empathy. We create images of a partner, observe, be honest and stop creating images. Right? Are we falling in love with the concept and the image of this person, or who they really are? Do you know who they really are? And how do you know? If you don't, if you don't know who they really are, man, you let them into your your world. Uh, you're setting yourself up for some serious uh, emotional disease from from people. Uh, you got uh, love from Michelle, and Michelle, we got much love for you. You do you do great work. Uh, bumped, bruised, and blessed. Uh, the roots of empathy, everyone else that's here, support each other, like, comment, share, uh, follow each other if you're comfortable with that and can learn from each other and it's emotionally safe for you. By all means, like, comment, share, follow. And Crystal recover. Nicole Black. And recovery. <laughs> and recovery. And recovery. Okay. Uh, make sure to take a peek at uh, Crystal Nicole uh, Black's page. Uh, we'll get together and do some other things uh you you will find her on uh narc abuse tv network youtube uh, on our youtube channel we have been welcomed there uh we have also had a great time here on instagram uh, we will have shows periodically here as well uh but you will as i mentioned in our earlier show today uh you with uh, sabine we did a show earlier just a few hours ago with her excellent show uh, i'm reminding everyone we are in a new location here um, uh, multiple places to shoot from uh, in here um, still getting unpacked stuff's not even on the walls yet uh, other monitors and stuff's not up uh, we're working our way to do that I just wanted to get a show out today uh, we did one earlier with Sabine and now I'm with my friend Crystal Nicole Black who is setting it on fire on Narc Abuse TV Network and I have others looking forward to having them help us out do some shows on YouTube uh, in which you will be able to get information, researched information that we will bring to your attention as well as individuals like Nicole uh, Black. I just wanted to say that too. I always wanted to try it out. Crystal Nicole Black. I'm just giving you all kind of names. Uh, so, so, uh, we, so thank you, Mocha Mocha. I'm just going to call you Mocha Mocha. Mocha. So, what, I don't know. I'm just making it up. Oh, like, there we go. That reminds me of Moto Moto. That's from Madagascar. Mo oh, my God. Madagascar. Yes, it is. That's right. Because I'm a lemur. Moto. I just want you to know that. I am a lemur. Right. So, um, <laughs> listen, everybody, we're done rambling. We love each and every one of you. Thank you so much. But we're out. Unless there's something else you got to say. That's it. That's good. Yeah, throw them kisses. That'll work. Everybody, have a good weekend. We'll see everybody soon. Look for us on YouTube. Bye. Bye.